This is part two of Music Theory Fundamentals Lecture 5. For this portion of our lecture, we'll be learning about relative minors and natural minor scales. We'll start by talking about what relative majors and minors are. We'll learn a little bit about modes, and we'll finish by learning how to construct a natural minor scale. Let's get started. Picture this scenario. I walk into a room and find you sitting at a desk, working diligently with pencil and paper. I ask, what kind of project do you have there? And you answer, oh, just something I'm helping to organize for this weekend. Glancing over your shoulder, I notice some patterns and ask you, oh, is this something for some kind of family reunion? How would I have known that you were working on something for a family reunion? There would be quite a few of the same last name on the page. When you attend a family reunion, there's a good chance that many of the people in attendance will share the same last name. This is one way to identify relatives. Keys also have relatives, but instead of sharing a last name, they share something different. For every major key, there is a relative minor. For every minor key, there is a relative major. What do they share? Well, it's not the same last name, but it's something similar. They share the same key signature. All of the modes on this page have the same pitches or the same key signature as C major, but they have a different pitch that they call tonic or home. If we hear them one at a time, Ionian is the most familiar. This is when we have C major starting on a C. The next scale is Dorian, which can go from D to D, but with the key signature of C major. Following that, starting on an E and ending on an E, we have Phrygian, followed by Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, and then we're back to Ionian. Each of these modes has a different color or timbre, and we've discussed some of those words so far in this class. While playing them back to back may not bring those colors out for you individually, I'll give you a couple of examples. If we have Dorian, for example, this is one of our minor modes, and there have been some familiar songs written in Dorian. shanties have been written in Dorian. If we take the Phrygian mode, like music you might hear in the movie Zorro. If we take Lydian, we have The Simpsons, and then we get to my favorite mode, which is Mixolydian. And yes, I know this is nerd alert time again. I do have a favorite mode. 
I'm going to play it starting on a C. All of these modes were very commonly heard in earliest written forms of church music, and some of them are starting to make a comeback. Mixolydian. in a relatively recent song that's become popular in churches in the last 15 years. And while these modes all have wonderful colors that we could explore, today we're going to focus our attention on the one we call Aeolian. We see these two scales isolated here, Ionian, which moves from a C to a C, and Aeolian, which moves from an A to an A. C major on the top, A minor on the bottom. These are relatives because they share the same key signature. Before we go any further learning the technique of finding relative keys and spelling scales, I'd like to discuss first how major and minor sound different to you. We're not looking for technical terms right now, just what you observe. I'm going to play a major scale and a natural minor scale back to back, and I'd like you to consider the differences in how they sound. One more time, major first, then minor. What differences do you hear? I recently asked a group of friends this question. What differences do you hear between major and minor? and I got a lot of really interesting answers. Some of them said, well, major sounds happy and minor sounds sad. Some said, oh, well, for major, I hear it as an expansive mode and minor sounds more contracted. Another friend said, major is simple and minor is melancholy. I heard bright versus dark triumphant versus reverent, joyful or somber. But one of my favorites is what my husband uses when he teaches theory classes. He says, major sounds like Mary had a little lamb. But minor sounds like Mary had a little lamb. Poor Mary. This brings up an interesting topic for experimentation. What happens when we take other melodies that might be familiar in major and change them so that they're now in minor? I'll play an example of this for you next.
Could anyone guess what that song was? Some of you may have recognized it as a famous Taylor Swift song called Shake It Off. If you didn't get it the first time, I'll play it for you again. Personally, I prefer this tune in minor. It's like saying, I'm going to shake it off, but it still hurts. I want to call up Taylor and say, you missed the boat on this one, girl. It should have been a minor song. Let's experiment now with a song you might recognize. Originally written in minor, but I'll play it for you in major. See if you can tell what the song is. recognize that song as Radioactive by Imagine Dragons? Great work! It's a little easy to miss because it sounds so happy in major, but if you missed it the first time, I'll show it to you one more time. In part one of this lecture, we discussed how to convert major pentatonic to minor pentatonic. We did this by making la home instead of do. We can use the same process to find our relative minor. When we use the same pitches as major, but start and end on la, we construct a natural minor scale. If we take our sixth scale degree from any of the major scales on this page and make that tonic or home instead of do, this will give us a natural minor scale. Let's practice. How could you convert a G major scale to its relative natural minor scale? Well, we go up to the sixth scale degree, which in this case is E. And we build a scale going from E to E, but with the key signature of G major.
This creates an E minor scale. One more. Convert an A flat major scale to its relative natural minor. What pitch would it start on? Count up to the sixth scale degree from A flat and you arrive on the solfege La, which in this case belongs to the F. So an A flat major scale has the same key signature as an F minor scale. So far we have learned how to find a relative minor and spell a natural minor scale by using the key signature of the relative major. But what if we know the tonic of the minor scale? How do we know the key signature of a minor scale if we are not told what the relative major is? We need to be able to find the relative major. The tonic pitches of relative major and relative minor keys are three half steps apart from each other. If you know the major and you want to find the relative minor, you go down three half steps. If you know the minor key and you want to find its relative major, you go up three half steps. So what does that mean if the relative minor is F sharp? We know what the minor is, so we need to go up three half steps. One, two, three. We've just landed on an A. So that means the relative major of F sharp is A. F sharp minor and A major share the same key signature. They are relatives. What if the relative minor is E flat? Once again, we know what the minor is, so we need to go up three half steps to find the relative major. One, two, three. In this case, we've just landed on a G flat. This means E flat minor and G flat major are relatives. They share the same key signature. What if the relative major is C sharp? Well, now we know what the major is, so we're going to go down three half steps to find its relative minor. Starting on a C sharp, one, two, three half steps down, we've just landed on an A sharp. This means that C sharp major and A sharp minor are relatives. They share the same key signature. One more. What if the relative major is D? Once again, we know what the major is, and now we need to find the relative minor, so we're going to go down three half steps. Starting on a D, one, two, three. That brings us to a B. This means that D major and B minor are relatives. They share the same key signature. Occasionally we find ourselves in a situation that gives us multiple enharmonic options for the relative. When that happens, how do we know which enharmonic to choose? We saw this when we were calculating the relative major of E flat minor. Remember how I said we arrive on a G flat? Why didn't we arrive on an F sharp? There are two basic guidelines we need to follow to help us choose the correct enharmonic. Number one, do the accidentals match? And number two, does it exist? I'll explain what those mean. Let's start with number one. Do the accidentals match? Back to E flat minor and G flat major. Because we started on a flat, which was E flat, when we move up three half steps, we have to choose the name of that key that has a flat in it. 
we won't have flats and sharps in the same key signature, remember? So you're not going to see a major or minor key with an E flat and an F sharp in it. It's always going to be either flats or sharps. So in this case, the correct enharmonic is G flat because tonic is E flat. Now we look at guideline number two. Does it exist? What if the relative minor is F? Well, we know that we need to go up three half steps to find the relative major. So let's do that. One, two, three. We've just landed on G sharp and A flat. Those are two of our enharmonic spellings to find our key signature. Does it exist? Well, look at the circle of fifths on the lower right. Do we see a G sharp major on that circle? We do not. Do we see an A flat major on our circle of fifths? Yes, we do. And it's right there. So we couldn't rely on the accidentals matching to figure out which enharmonic to use, but we did use the technique of determining whether the key existed. G sharp major, it's a hypothetical key, but A flat major, that's on our circle of fifths. This means the relative major of F minor is A flat major. They share the same key signature. Let's do one more of these. What if the relative minor is C? We'll start on a C, move up one, two, three half steps. We arrive on a D sharp or E flat. Which one is it? Well, which one exists on our circle of fifths? Do we see a D sharp? No, we do not, but we do have an E flat. So the relative major of C minor is E flat major. Once again, they share the same key signature. Remember these two questions if you get stuck. Do the accidentals match? If the tonic of the first key has flats, you know you're looking for an enharmonic that has flats. When neither one of those is present and you still have to pick an enharmonic, ask yourself, does it exist? Check your circle of fifths of major keys, and that will give you the correct answer. There's one more question that students frequently ask me when we're working on finding relative majors and minors, and that is, I always forget, do I go up three half steps or down three half steps? Well, I've got a way to help you remember this, but I must warn you in advance, it's a bit childish. However, I promise you'll never forget. Are you ready? It's time for the overgeneralization, oversimplification of the day. Here we go. Major keys sound happy. Minor keys sound sad. So if you know what the major key is and you want to find the relative minor, you go down three half steps. And if you find the minor key and you want to know what the relative major is, you go up three half steps. Okay, yes, I understand. That is really annoying. I was really annoying when I did that, but you'll never forget that you go up to find major and you go down to find the relative minor. If this is a little too annoying for you, you can always use my husband's method. He says, where do you go to find a major? On land. Where do you go to find a minor? Underground. Sure, it works, but you don't get to do the fun voices. Now it's time to construct a D natural minor scale. And I promise this is the only time I'll ask you this question today. What's the first step? Put it on the staff. So we'll start with a D. 
We're going to write from a D to a D on our staff. It's very important that you start with this. If you start by finding the relative major, you might end up choosing the wrong tonic. Now that we've put it on the staff, our second step is to find the relative major. We can do this on our keyboard. Starting on a D, we're going to go up three half steps to the relative major. We've just landed on an F. So D minor and F major share the same key signature. And if we take our circle of fifths, knowing that C has no sharps or flats, and move one degree to the left, we end up on F, which has one flat. And when we have one flat in the key signature, our order of flats tells us that that flat will always and only be a B flat. So we're gonna plug in the key signature now of our relative major by adding B flat. Now let's construct a G natural minor scale. The first step is to put it on the staff. So we'll write from a G to a G. What sharps or flats does it need? We don't know yet and it doesn't matter because this is always our first step. Step two, find the relative major. Well, we know the minor is G, so we're going to go up three half steps. One, two, three, and we land on this key right here. This is a good way to practice the method we discussed earlier. There are two enharmonic spellings for this key, A sharp and B flat. We can't match accidentals because we start on a G, not a G flat or a G sharp. So now we have to ask, does it exist? Which one of these is present on our major circle of fifths, A sharp or B flat? We found a B flat and there's our answer. G minor and B flat major are relatives. Finally, we plug in the key signature of the relative major. B flat major has two flats. Let's add them in. B flat is the first flat in our order of flats. E flat is the second. This is a G natural minor scale. Today we learned about relative keys and modes. We listened to the differences between major and minor. We learned how to find a relative major or minor key by moving three half steps. And we also learned how to construct natural minor scales. At this point, you should take some time with the online tools to practice constructing natural minor scales. That will give you an opportunity to review what we learned today.